At the present, big, boxy, off-road oriented SUVs are quite popular, especially when they are glammed up with posh, certainly not for off-roading trim and luxury feature content. The 2023 Land Rover Defender most certainly matches that description, and it is also well liked by those who have no desire to ever travel to the types of unclean locations that this powerful Land Rover is capable of. However, the Land Rover Defender does not subject its owners to uncomfortable rides, shoddy handling, loud interior noise, or reduced interior room as other large, boxy, off-road oriented SUVs do. It is functional, elegant, cozy, and roomy. The new three-row, eight-passenger Defender 130 is significantly more roomy than the two-door Defender 90. Basically, the Defender is a no-compromises off-roader and one of the greatest SUVs you can purchase if money is no object. Of course, money is usually a source of worry, and the Defender is not inexpensive. Even the most basic Defender starts at close to $55,000, but the supercool Defender 110 V8 seen above cost almost $111,000 instead. Before you've accelerated above $70,000, it doesn't take many alternatives, including checking the mild hybrid inline six engine box. You don't actually need that many alternatives, which is excellent news. The Defender is fairly well equipped in its more basic forms, and those more expensive models lack the overt luxury appearance and materials options you'd get in a Range Rover vehicle with a comparable price. In other words, it's okay to choose a vehicle with a lesser trim level. But hey, if you have the money, you probably won't regret taking advantage of the V8's opulent, deep rumbling and the smooth, easy power it offers. It's difficult not to fall in love. What's new for 2023? The Land Rover Defender 130 makes its debut, adding a third row seat that is far more practical than the 110's little one. In addition to having legroom enough for adults, the Defender is one of the few eight-passenger luxury SUVs with three seat belts throughout. This additional row results from adding 13.4 inches of length to the same 119-inch wheelbase. It's not hard to tell the difference, and the 130's proportions definitely aren't as neat as those of its smaller brothers. The departure angle also loses greatly, dropping from 40 to 28.5 degrees. Every 130 has an inline six engine and air suspension as standard equipment, and like its brother models, there will be a first edition model with unique color combinations and the majority of the available amenities. What are the Defender interior and in-car technology like? The Defender's cabin has an unmistakably tough and practical air, thanks to its strong horizontal lines, metal trim, rubber flooring, many grab grips, and storage aplenty. Definitely more so than any current Land Rover. Although it may have a tough aspect, the materials used are often of a high caliber that justifies its high caliber price. Open pore wood trim and sophisticated two-tone leather options are also available on top trim levels, but they are insufficient to achieve the type of opulent appearance and feel you'd get in rival SUVs costing more than $100,000. The Land Rover Pivi Pro 10-inch broad touchscreen, above middle, interface is standard on every Defender, but a higher 11.4-inch touchscreen is optional. It almost seems like a nice retroactive update, but the 10-inch basic screen is tastefully wedged in between the dash's prominent horizontal crossmembers. In order to give the bigger screen a less refined, integrated look, it protrudes beyond those cross-members. Although the user interface offered by those displays isn't as well-organized as those of competing systems, we've found it to be occasionally flaky and the radio controls may be frustrating. The visuals and general look are aesthetically pleasingly contemporary. Additionally, the widescreen lacks a split-screen option to take use of its incredibly broad layout. Because they provide several design options and can be configured to convey as much or as little information as you'd like, the optional all-digital instruments leave a greater impact. However, we would also be perfectly comfortable with the conventional analog gauge cluster. How big is the Defender? That's a hard solution because there are now three different body sizes. The four-door Defender 110, which is sized similarly to a medium luxury SUV like a BMW X5, is the most popular body type. The new 8-passenger Defender 130 has the same wheelbase as the 110 but is 13.6 inches longer, making the two-door Defender 90 a shocking 17 inches shorter overall than the 110 with a 10-inch shorter wheelbase. Or about the same as a Lincoln Navigator. Off-road maneuverability is greatly improved by the 90's compact size, but the inside is visibly more smaller and more difficult to access with two less doors. Legroom in the back seat is quite adequate, at 36.6 inches, just 1.8 inches less than the noticeably roomy 110. Space for cargo is altogether different. Although it appears to still be spacious enough-ish to carry a Bernese mountain dog, the modest 15.6 cubic feet from the 1990s is far less than what you get behind the third rows of many midsize SUVs. You'll need a freight carrier in the Defender 90 or you'll have to leave your pals behind. 
The Defender 110 features a large, boxy cargo space, seen above left, that we discovered swallows much more than its 35.4 cubic feet would imply, so that probably won't be necessary. Additionally, there are several intelligent storage options and extremely customizable roof rails throughout. The Defender's maximum volume is 70.4 cubic feet, and the load floor folds flat. The 110 has enough of first and second row room, and the elevated sitting position and boxy design give it an airy sensation and exceptional vision. The rear-facing kid seat could be installed without compromising front legroom. Although there is a third row seat option, bottom left, it is so small and offers even less room for baggage than the D90 that it is just not worth considering. Purchase the new Defender 130 if you want a third row. Off-road mobility and performance will undoubtedly decrease more, particularly in terms of departure angle, but you will acquire a third row that is three across and can accommodate adults. Below right. Again, the boxy design is advantageous since it makes the vehicle seem less cramped than comparable three-row luxury SUVs. The amount of cargo capacity when all three seats are up is 13.7 cubic feet, see image to the right, which is somewhat more than the D110 but still among the least among three-row cars. What are the Defender fuel economy and performance specs? A 2.0-liter turbocharged inline 4 with 296 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque powers the basic 90 and 110 power plant. Along with a permanent four-wheel drive system, the vehicle has an 8-speed automatic transmission. The 110 gets 17 miles per gallon city, 20 miles per gallon highway, and 18 miles per gallon combined. The 90 gets 18-21-19, and Land Rover claims the 110 can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 7.7 seconds. The 90 does it in 6.7 seconds. This economy and performance are acceptable for a large, heavy off-road SUV but not exceptional for a premium SUV of its size, such as a BMW X5. The 90, 110, and 130 all have a 3.0-liter inline-6 as an option, while the 130 comes standard. It has a wide variety of performance-improving components, including a mild hybrid system, an electric supercharger, and a turbocharger. With 395 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque, output significantly increases. The 110 0 to 60 time drops to 5.8 seconds, the 90s to 5s.7, and the 130s to 6s.3. For the 90 and 110, fuel efficiency rises marginally to 18 miles per gallon city, 23 miles per gallon highway, and 20 miles per gallon combined, and to 19 17 21 for the 130. A powerful 5.0 liter supercharged V8 with 518 horsepower and 461 pound feet of torque is an option for the 90 and 110. With customized gearbox settings, it can accelerate the 110 from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 5.1 seconds and the 90 from 0 to 60 miles per hour in only 4.9 seconds. The 110 V8's 14 miles per gallon city, 19 miles per gallon highway, and 16 miles per gallon combined fuel efficiency ratings result in poor fuel economy. The 90 is almost same, although it has a slightly higher city rating of 15 miles per gallon. During a week of testing, we observed an average of roughly 16 miles per gallon. What's the Defender like to drive? The Defender's air suspension, like that of other Land Rovers, produces a controlled, buttery smooth ride that is superior to the great majority of other SUVs, much alone tough off-roaders like the Wrangler, Bronco, and 4Runner. Even the 90 is more comfortable than rivals despite having a short wheelbase that causes stronger truck-like reactions to potholes. The steering on the Defender is sluggish and needs a lot of twisting, as is customary for off-road driving, but it's also highly accurate and offers excellent input for a vehicle that can climb boulders. We were honestly surprised by how well a V8-powered Defender 110 with its chassis and dynamic managed to adeptly carve a mountain road, thanks to the air suspension's startlingly outstanding road holding. If you're coming from a crossover or vehicle, the long travel brake pedal will undoubtedly take some getting used to, but the brakes are readily regulated and you get used to them. Overall, there is virtually no comparison between the Defender and those other off-roading competitors in terms of on-road drivability. Naturally, the Land Rover costs a lot more money. Due to its rigid D7X all-aluminum unibody, class-leading approach and departure angles, optional adjustable air suspension, new screen-based terrain response system, two-speed transfer case, and, with a 3.0-liter engine option, a standard locking center differential and an optional active rear locking diff, we found it to be equally impressive off-road. These are connected to devices, such as a water depth weighting sensor and a camera view that virtually makes the hood disappear, that, if you desire, remove all the guesswork from four-wheeling.
Is that an equal slope on the other side or a precipice? Is a feature that is extremely helpful while climbing over rocks or cresting a hill without a spotter. Of course, if you're facing narrow and difficult terrain, choosing the 90 has its own intrinsic benefits for off-roading. The standard inline 4-0 to 60 pace won't wow, but because to its generous torque and clever ZF automated gearbox, it should feel speedy enough. The 395 horsepower inline 6 with turbocharging, supercharging, and mild hybrid technology feels like overkill, which is maybe more pertinent. We drove nearly 200 miles up and over the coastal mountains of Oregon, ascending steep gradients and passing slower cars, yet we never even came close to using its full capability. Additionally, it increases the complexity of a car that was already complicated and comes from a company with a long history of dependability issues. Having said that, we've also just driven a Defender with a supercharged V8, and although it undoubtedly offers everything that is necessary and then some, holy cow is it simple to fall in love with. Along with the additional, buttery smooth torque, the engine also emits a deep, never-ending rumble via its four large tailpipes. If you put any effort into it, the rumbling changes into an enraged warble that never deviates into stupid popping and crackling. The Defender is a gentlemanly person.